All right, so I'm pretty sure I figured out absolutely everything you need to know to dominate this new World Boss Legend stage for Gore the God Butcher. So today I wanted to give you guys my top 10 tips, everything I've learned so far. Granted, it's only been a day, but I spent a good two hours in here beating up on this guy and I got up to stage 10. So I think I have the fight pretty much down to a science and since most of you guys are going to get access to this fight today at reset after you do your five clears to complete the challenges i wanted to give you guys you know a little bit of a head start if you will so let's talk about some of the things that you need to know about this boss fight because it is difficult it is the most difficult boss fight so if you were having a hard time clearing stage one against infinity otron best believe you're more than likely not going to be able to take on gore because only strong tier threes are going to keep up and and to be honest with you i, I want to say not even keep up they're still going to struggle but only the people like scarlet witch Athena, dr doom makari you know those broken tier characters that are really good for pve content they're the only ones that are going to really actually have a fighting chance because this boss was created specifically for tier four characters so do keep that in mind if you jump in here at reset and you're struggling it's not because well it might be because your characters are not built well or your cards aren't good enough but more than likely it's because you're using the weaker tier threes or transcended characters so do keep that in mind you're gonna have to use the upper echelons additionally when you're fighting this guy just know he's going to guard break and interrupt your attacks quite often by iframing constantly so you want to time your attacks carefully another thing i want to say before we get this thing started movement speed is actually important characters that are very slow are probably going to die more often than not just because of how often he's teleporting around the map so if a character is very slow like someone like storm She's going to have a hard time unless you're paying attention and you know exactly what to look forward to or look out for, right? Next thing I want to say before we jump in, Gore has two phases. Phase one, he has 30 HP bars and phase two, he actually has 10 HP bars. So he has a total of 40 HP bars, very similar to Ultron. However, he revives after he dies. After he loses the first 30 bars, he will revive at the very end of the fight in his final form, his final phase, if you will, and he will have 10 bars remaining. That being said, let's jump in. First and foremost, when it comes to your strikers, you're going to need ignore dodge strikers if the character you're using doesn't natively have any ignore dodge in their kit. So like, let's say for example, my Scarlet Witch here, you can see she has 28% ignore dodge, which is coming from her uniform. So if a character does not have ignore dodge built in, whether it's from a passive or from a uniform effect, you're gonna need to give them ignore dodge strikers or a CTP that has ignore dodge on it because this boss fight this boss himself and the minions that he summons i believe they're all at level 80 and in case you don't know how this game works when the enemy you're attacking is a higher level than you are there's a higher probability that they dodge your attacks that's why when a character goes to level 80 in preparation for tier 4 all of a sudden you notice that you no longer need ignore dodge strikers against somebody like no this fight right here is actually very similar to Null where you need Ignore Dodge either passively or from a CTP or Strikers. You need them, okay? Unless you're using a level 80 or a tier 4 character. So in this case, my tier 4 Iron Man, even though he only has 3% Ignore Dodge, he actually does not need any Ignore Dodge. You're not really going to see Dodge pop up on Gore's head or on the heads of the mobs that we have to kill in here in between phases okay so ignore dodge strikers are very very important the next thing i want to talk to you guys about is actually once we hop into battle okay this one right here is very important you want to make sure you do not step into the darkness i really really like the music and i also like his entrance okay so as you fight this guy, I don't want to kill him. I'm just going to do a little bit of damage, right? I'll talk to you guys about what's going on at the top there, but 
you'll notice you see how over there it got really dark so eventually the darkness will reach the center of the map there's absolutely nothing you can do to slow it down or stop it so you notice if i go over here all of a sudden there's this blue thing popping up on my head which is reducing the amount of pierce i have on my cards and my ctp you do not want to stand in this darkness the good thing about this is unlike the dormammu giant boss raid fight if you leave that darkness area the pierce reduction actually gets removed almost instantly so when you're fighting this guy do not stand in the darkness because you're losing 50 percent of your additional pierce which in case you don't know pierce allows you to ignore the enemy's defense completely and gore being as though he's a world boss legend he has very very high defenses so you don't want to cripple yourself you don't want to cripple your characters by standing and fighting in the darkness always stand in the light the light will show you the way home anyways moving on so you notice we're not attacking him and under his hp bar there's the necro sword and it's slowly filling up even if i was attacking him there's absolutely nothing i can do to slow down the development the progress if you will of that bar it will always fill up no matter what this is called the shadow encroachment and this happens at set intervals throughout the fight. The first time this is going to happen is at 420 exactly. No matter what you're doing, whether you're attacking him or just simply evading and letting him attack. No matter what, it's always going to happen. The second time it will happen is at 205 remaining on the clock. But that will only happen if you're still stuck in phase 1. Remember what I said at the beginning of the video. He has two phases. Phase 1 with 30 HP bars, which is what we're in right now. And then there's phase 2 where he has 10 bars remaining. The final phase where you just wipe him out if you have enough DPS. So we'll just show you what happens once the darkness takes over the map entirely. And just like that, he's now encroached or enraged. And right here, he's going to summon minions all across the map the quicker you're able to kill these minions the better it will be for you because he's just gonna constantly keep summoning these minions if you take too long and if the encroachment shadow the purple bar at the bottom here actually runs out before you're able to kill all of the mobs you will die or at least the character that is on the field at that moment will die similar to Ultron and Mephisto where Mephisto enrages or Ultron collects all the stones and fully optimizes. So you want to make sure you kill these minions as quickly as possible. Now, since I'm using a tier 4 Iron Man, we can pretty much just kill them with basic attacks, right? And I'll show you something here really quickly, okay? So look, look at this. Taskmaster, you notice all of the attacks are getting dodged. If I go over here with Hulkbuster, a lot of his attacks are getting dodged as well. Okay, let me just go over here and finish this up really quickly. So, notice he summoned more people, okay? Okay, we finally got him out of that, that phase. If I didn't tag to um, bring out... Hold on. If I didn't tag to bring out Hope Buster and Taskmaster to show you that because these guys are level 70 and we're not using Ignore Dodge Strikers, their attacks are being dodged by the mobs because, like I said originally... These guys are all either level 72 or level 80. My guess, since this is tier 4 content, they're all at level 80. Okay? So, make sure you're using Ignore Dodge Strikers. That way, whenever you bring a character in, none of their attacks are getting dodged. Because even the mobs are going to dodge your attacks. And you need to kill the mobs, otherwise you will die. And this is going to happen consistently throughout the fight. One thing that I forgot to tell you guys here is that after you break this encroachment by killing these roach type creatures that he summons you will get about 10 seconds where you can pop off as much damage on him as possible that's what you're seeing right here obviously since i'm using a tier 4 character and my iron man is built really well and this is tier 4 content you can see i'm doing a ton of damage now this damage will stop once we get to about 16 bars as you can see this is the halfway point of the very first phase once this happens, Null is going to enter an iframe and he's going to basically flood the map with spikes and follow that up with three slashes tracking you around the map 
and after that he's going to do an X pattern attack similar to the red X that you see for an iframe ignore skill. This reminds me of like Thanos for example when Thanos is summoning the, midi the meteors in English right so he jumps into the air here one two three and then he does the X slash he just basically dodged that and you can play out the rest of this fight here business as usual the same as the first um the first 15 bars or the, the first anyways english after you get him past 15 bars and you deal with that unskippable phase of his you basically just revert back to business as usual doing as much damage as you possibly can because the encroachment meter will start filling up again as you can see at the bottom there, beneath his HP, the Necro Sword has one bar on it and it's slowly climbing. However, it will actually fill up significantly slower than it did initially. I don't want to waste your time, but believe me when I say, it's going to take about a minute and 10 seconds before this thing fills up again. So you don't really have to worry too much about the encroachment meter unless you don't have enough DPS to complete the fight. The first one comes within 40 seconds. The second one doesn't pop up until two minutes and five seconds remaining. And that's not going to happen because we're just going to basically just pop off and push him into the final phase. Once he gets into the final phase here, he's going to trigger another cutscene. And at this point, the encroachment meter will be gone. However, he'll be doing some of the things that he was doing when he was encroaching to begin with. So summoning minions all the time and teleporting all around. However, before we get to that, he's going to actually start this next phase here off by doing the exact same thing he did at 16 bars. Okay, so basically spikes all over the ground. And then we're just going to dodge this. Oop, oop. And then he's going to do the one, two, three. Sorry, I was not paying attention. And then the X slash. And then we'll basically just like fully heal. I don't want to kill him. I'm trying my best not to actually oh, kill him. But I probably should make sure we don't die. And look like a scrub, right? All right. So, <laughs> all right. It's, it's tough not to kill him because I'm trying not to use my skills, but by not using my skills, I'm letting him hit me, but it's fine. One big piece of advice I, I, I need to give you guys here is make sure you're bringing a character that can actually heal. I would say make sure they can heal for about... Um, you can see he just keeps summoning his minions over and over. He's not encroaching though, so you have plenty of time to kill them. However, you can see they have iframe ignore attacks and whatnot, so yeah. In between attacking Gore himself, maybe get rid of some of these guys because they can be rather irritating. You can see, this is the end of the fight. Once you get him down to 10 bars, it's just you, him, and a few of the minions that pop up here or there. If you want to, you can clear them out with some AoE skills, but they're going to keep spawning regardless. So you might as well just focus your, your utmost, all of your damage for the most part on Gore so you can just crush him. So that's pretty much everything I've learned so far about the boss fight. It seems overwhelming at first, but once you play it a couple times, a couple dozen times, I guess, it just becomes business as usual. However, though, I would say make sure you're bringing a character that has a sizable heal. You know what I'm saying? 35% extra HP every seven and a half seconds is nice, okay? If a character only has like a 10% heal, you'll probably have some issues until you figure out the fight, okay? Especially... If they're not a tier 4 character because tier 4 characters have higher base defenses hp and all that stuff so that's going to help their survivability 